Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. The kingdom of God is justice and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days, visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli, and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you. Lie down again. So we went and lay down. The Lord again called Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time. And he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in the psalm. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my destiny and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it all together. You press upon me the time and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. 
Our second reading is from Paul's letter to the Corinthians. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is not meant for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the member of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is said, the two shall be one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body, but the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you were bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about <coughs> whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote. Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you go to get where, where did you how, where did you get to know me? Jesus said, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. And when from
Good news, people, that's what you are to be. And that's what we should all be about. Christians, you and I are called and commissioned to be people who spread throughout the world the word of Jesus Christ. Listen again to the words from 1 Samuel. The Lord called. Samuel, Samuel, and he said, here am I, and ran to Eli and said, here am I, for you called me. But Eli said, I did not call you, go back and lie down. Now after Samuel had heard the call three times, Eli perceived that the Lord was calling Samuel. Eli then said to Samuel, go lie down, and if the Lord calls you again, you shall say this, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. <coughs> and the Lord called Samuel again, and Samuel did answer, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Are you listening? <laughs> did you hear your name being called? And how did you respond to God's call? During the Sundays after the Epiphany, we celebrate the light of Christ shining in our darkened world. Christ is not only the light of the world, but he commands and commissions and calls people and equips us to be lights into the world in his name. Scripture always and everywhere speaks primarily about God and only secondarily about us. And today's gospel follows closely on the heels of one of the most majestic passages about God and God's incarnation in Jesus. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. And right after that, we have this account of Jesus calling his disciples. Whatever the word made flesh wants to do in the world, he chooses not to do it alone. Jesus calls ordinary women and men to work with him. And again from today's gospel, in which one of those ordinary people calls another person to follow Jesus, and that wonderful basic act of vocation is today's focus. Jesus works through us to work toward the world, to reach out to people through other people. Jesus, light of the world, makes us his light in this world. And the Gospel of John opens in the majestic cadence. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was light. In him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness. Do you see what John is doing here? Do you hear an echo of a much earlier biblical text? Genesis chapter 1. When God the creator got creation going, how did God do it? In the beginning, God said, let there be light. And there was light, light shining in the darkened void. And John is claiming that Jesus Christ is the light of the world. In Jesus, 
It's like Genesis chapter 1 all over again. It's like God is again making something out of nothing, resuming the good creation that we had so blotched with our sin. And now, shining light in the world. We're in that season after the Epiphany, reflecting on how the light of Christ shines in our world. And what is the very first thing that Jesus does to get his mission going? Jesus begins his ministry by calling a group of people to be his disciples. All of the Gospels begin the story of Jesus' ministry in the same way. Jesus calling disciples. And some may wonder at this point, if Jesus is the light of the world, the beginning of a new creation, why doesn't he just shine? Why doesn't he just begin recruiting a bunch of ordinary people to shine with him? Why doesn't he just start recreating? Why doesn't Jesus do all this good himself? Whatever it is that Jesus Christ wants to do for the world, he chooses not to do it alone. He invites a group of ordinary, everyday people, people like you, people like me, to do it with him. Jesus refuses to save the world by himself. Now, some of you may have thought that you came to church this morning, that it was your idea. Certainly, as a committed Christian that you are, you chose to come here to worship this morning. Well, an implication of today's gospel is that you didn't choose to come here. You were invited. You were summoned. You were called. Why you? Because that's the way Jesus does business. All of us are Christians, not on the basis of something we decided on, but on the basis of an invitation that we receive. Jesus doesn't work alone. All the Gospels begin the story of Jesus' work by telling the story of Jesus calling his disciples to work with him. And yet, there's something odd in this morning's gospel. Did you notice that Andrew is called by Jesus? And the first thing that Andrew does is rush out to find his brother Simon, and he says to him, Come, we have found the Messiah. Then Jesus finds Philip. And then Philip rushes out to look for Nathanael. And when Philip invites Nathanael to follow Jesus, Nathanael says, can anything good come out of a hick town like Nazareth? <laughs> then Philip retorts, come and see for yourself. And then Jesus is walking down a road and sees a couple fishermen mending their nets. Follow me, he calls. Then Jesus intrudes into the counting house where he sees Matthew bent over his coins and fo calls, follow me. Only in John's gospel do we get this account of some of Jesus' disciples being called by other disciples, which leads me to an insight. Sometimes Jesus directly calls people to follow him. And sometimes people call people to follow Jesus. Some of you are here today because the risen Christ appeared directly and dramatically, personally, and called you. Well, 
rejoice. But I expect that most of you are here because another disciple like Philip, like Andrew, called you to follow Jesus. Somebody to, told you the story and lived the story of Jesus before you in such a way that eventually led you to say, yes. Sometimes Jesus calls disciples through other disciples who don't know how good they are at calling disciples. And that's how I arrived. Thanks be to God. Later on in John's Gospel, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. And again, I have come as a light into the world. We are all here because we're all united in our belief that Jesus Christ is the light of the world. In Matthew's Gospel, Jesus looks at this ragtag group of people who happen to be his disciples and says to them, you are the light of the world. Let your light shine. Us? To tell the truth, it's much easier to look at Jesus of Nazareth and believe that he is the light of the world rather than to look around at the people we meet each day and believe that they and we are called by him to be lights of the world. Well, you are. We are. You are the light of the world. Let your light shine. Yes, you. How did you become a disciple of Jesus? And how did you respond to Jesus' call? Let us stand and profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from Prayers of the people. 
Please pray with me our prayer for growth. Gracious God, we ask that you increase our love of you and deepen our faith in you so that we can be your faithful witnesses in this corner of your creation. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May they also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Dabney, our bishop, Ray, Susie, and for all of our retired clergy. We pray also for Holy Spirit, Nativity, Redeemer, clergy spouses, and the widows of the Diocese of Southwest Florida. We pray for Donald, our president, Rick, our governor, Randall, our mayor, and the Lee County commissioners. We pray for the ministries at Iona Hope, especially the prison ministry. We offer our thanksgiving for the many blessings of this day, for our guests and those who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. We pray for Christians, Muslims, and Jews, and all people of faith throughout the world who are suffering persecution for their beliefs. We pray for all who work for peace, especially those who give their lives that it may grow. We pray for all victims of terrorism and violence and for refugees. We pray for all those impacted by natural disasters. We pray for the release of the soul of David Shaw, who recently departed this life. We pray for those who are committed to our daily prayers, especially Rhonda, Rob, Marianne, Mindy, David, Andrew, Evie, Mary, Maureen, Timothy, Andrew, Shannon, Chase, Cody, Sandy, Frank, Bob, Judy, Gordon, Maggie, Maggie, Barb, Sandra, Gretchen, Josie, Richard, Brian, the Flynn family, Edmund, Julie, Patrick, Kathy, Barbara. In our congregation, we pray for the Mimi family, the Mayberry family, the Mayer family, the McBride family, and the McCaleb family, and the McEwen family. We also pray for our pets, especially Blue, Destiny, Sammy, Mama Bear, Gurley, Howard, Buddy, and Lulu. Are there others for whom we should pray and blessings for which we give thanks?
let us confess our sins to God. We confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you.
O Lord, you fed the multitudes by the lakeside by blessing the gifts of a few people. Please bless these gifts to the good of your community and bless us in your name. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. To give them thanks and praise. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places. Our true and loving God, through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high by whom you created all things. You laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out from the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, Holy One of blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so as the evening stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings in all creation as we shout with joy. <laughs> never been silent. You called the people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign and give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin brought us into your life, reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread, and when he giveth thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends, and said, Drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so, remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection, and ascension, longing for Christ coming in glory and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made, we acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us. And upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ. And in the fullness of time, gather us with Columba and all your people into the joy of our true eternal home through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and Creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father in, who, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This is the true bread which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. So come to this table, you who have much faith and you who would like to have more. You who have been here often and you have not been here for a long time. You who have tried to follow Jesus and you who have failed. Come, it is Christ who invites us to meet him here. Eat this bread, drink this wine, come to me.
And now in joyful thanksgiving for all the gifts we have received, let us pray together saying, God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world, and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.